You might have heard about a treatment modality called shockwave therapy, but if you're like me, you have some questions as to whether or not it actually works. Now, personally, I'm usually pretty skeptical when I learn about these kinds of treatment tools, and as a physical therapist, I do my best to objectively look at treatment techniques to help my patients recover as quickly as possible. So this week, I took a deep dive into the research behind shockwave therapy, and I've got some good news, and I've got some bad news. The good news is that a lot of research shows that it might be helpful for certain issues. I'll cover those in a minute because it's really interesting. The bad news, well, like most things, it's not a magic bullet. And some studies show that shockwave therapy really doesn't make a difference for certain issues compared to other treatments, so we'll cover that too. But first, I'll give you a brief overview of what shockwave therapy is, then I'll cover some research supporting this treatment, as well as some research that questions the effectiveness of shockwave therapy so that you can make a well-informed decision whether or not this type of treatment is right for you. If that sounds good, let's dive in. Now, in simple terms, shockwave therapy, also known as extracorporeal shockwave therapy or ESWT, is a non-invasive treatment that uses high-pressure sound wave pulses. Originally, this technology was used for breaking apart kidney stones, and of course, people thought, well, if it works here, let's try it on other parts of the body. Now, the main theory behind this treatment is that it promotes pain relief, enhances blood flow, and facilitates tissue regeneration. Okay, let's stop right there for a second because all of that sounds great, but I was curious to find out the real results from actual research. So let's take a look at some of the critics and compare it with some of the supporters of shockwave therapy. And what better critic to a treatment than an insurance company? Just so happens that United Healthcare took the time to create an entire document that questions the validity of shockwave therapy. Obviously, their approach is to be ultra skeptical on the treatment because frankly, they don't wanna cover the treatment. It can be quite expensive. So let's see what they found in the research. The first study they cite is from Stania et al. in 2023. It's a systematic review and meta-analysis to determine the efficacy of shockwave therapy as a singular treatment for Achilles tendinopathy. The study analyzed data from six randomized control trials, which totaled 157 participants, and it found that shockwave therapy did not significantly reduce pain on its own compared to other conservative treatments. Now, this study isn't saying flat out that shockwave therapy doesn't work. It's saying that it did not reduce the pain any more than other treatments when used separately. What this could be pointing to is the possibility that shockwave therapy provides a sort of placebo effect, which is a phenomenon where a person does experience improvements in their condition after receiving a sham treatment. But in order to determine if shockwave therapy itself is a placebo, you'd have to design a study with a sham to compare it with the actual shockwave treatment, but that wasn't the case with this study. They simply compared shockwave to other treatments and found that it was no better when used on its own. Now, in comparison to this paper is another systematic review by Calum Feeney in 2022 that looked at seven randomized control trials and determined that four of them found shockwave therapy to be effective for Achilles tendinopathy when combined with eccentric exercises and stretches. And that's great. Now, to me, this is pointing to the idea that a modality like shockwave therapy may be effective for issues like Achilles tendinopathy when used in combination with physical therapy exercises, but it still doesn't compare it to a sham treatment to rule out the placebo effect. Two different approaches, two different studies, but now you can see why an insurance company would highlight one study and the supporters of shockwave therapy may promote another study, sometimes even elements of the same study, but they may cherry pick the parts that support their view. And that's exactly why we have to look at the data for ourselves. And you can repeat this for almost every area of the body, from the shoulder to the elbow and the back and the neck. And my key takeaway here is this. I'm not here to bash or even to sell you the idea of shockwave wave therapy. My biggest goal here is to look at both sides of the argument and to show you that people can have conflicting interpretations of the research, especially if they cherry pick some of the data that supports their bias. Of course, the insurance companies are going to highlight the research that questions the effectiveness of shockwave therapy. And of course, the clinical provider of shockwave therapy will highlight a lot of the positive results in similar studies. But you as a consumer or even the provider uh, can find these studies by looking up the topic on PubMed and reading through the results of relevant systematic reviews on the topic of shockwave therapy because there's quite a bit to look at, including this latest gem of an article that does use, a, they use a sham treatment option to determine whether or not shockwave therapy is a placebo. I'll cover that in even more detail in a video here because it's an absolute 
fantastic study. Now, I will say this, I think there is a lot of potential with technology like this, and, and clearly, people have uh, experienced pain relief, improved function, uh, all just like these studies, which is amazing. And, and obviously, if you look online, you're gonna find individuals raving about the effectiveness of shockwave therapy, and even people who are willing to spend 200 per session, or even thousands of dollars to purchase their own shockwave machine, like the ones that I've seen on Amazon. The question is, are they wrong? No, I'm not gonna argue with their experiences because if you have plantar fasciitis or any other ailment for long enough, you're likely to try almost anything and to spend any a lot of money uh, doing it. And if it worked for you, fantastic. But personally, I just wanna know whether or not uh, there is a placebo effect happening behind shockwave therapy. And the good news is that I think we finally have an answer, which I'll cover in this video right here. But I'm still curious to know your thoughts about all of this. Have you used shockwave therapy in the past? Uh, how did it go? Where did you use it on? Let me know um, what kind of treatments you've experienced with shockwave therapy by leaving a comment below before you watch this latest video on whether or not uh, shockwave therapy is just a placebo. I'll see you there.